Okay then folks, so that done, let's go through some of the overall stats on this tyre. What is the size, type, etc. So this is a 50-50 off-road, on-road tyre. Um, the size and on the tyre, it is a 150 by 70 by 18. So it's a 150 by 70 18 and it's an Anlas Capra X price fitted to the bike was just over £100 it was £105 all ups for me that is good value for money before we even start in terms of outright mileage then let's take a very close look at this tyre this tyre as I said there has done around two and a half thousand miles now and arguably if we look cross section you can still see there is that six and a half mil uh, gap between each of the knobs so it is still performing reasonably well um, not as well as it would when it's brand new obviously but I think at two and a half thousand miles probably 50% lifespan gone I'll be quite happy if I get 5,000 out of this one on the Metas E10 Dakar I ran that down as low as I possibly could and that gave me 2,100 miles so as I stated there earlier tyres are are very objective things first and foremost you need to decide on what type of riding that you're going to be doing fundamentally the geographical area that you're going to be riding in what kind of terrain are you going to be going over is it going to be lots of sloppy mud is it going to be lots of sand is it going to be lots of wet grass or are you riding over rocks and boulders here where I live in the northeast we do have a reasonable amount of mud it tends to be silty type mud rather than gooey arable pasture type mud and we do have lots of rocks and boulders as well and for me this this tyre suits my riding style over those uh, types of terrain extremely well. So I think what we're best doing then folks is get in on the bike, get some footage gathered for you guys and let's take this 50-50 uh, Anlas Capra X off-road as well as on-road and we'll give you a little bit of a walk to talk, talk through as we go. So let's jump on the bike and come with me. So as you've just seen there in that uh, brief explanation in terms of uh, tyres and how we think about tyres, let's start with the on-road capabilities of this Anlas Capra X 5050. Well, for me, okay, you've got to appreciate that it is an off-road tyre as well as an on-road tyre. So if you're looking for a knee down, scrape the pegs every corner time kind of tyre, this one absolutely 100% is not for you. So if you are looking for something that will give you longevity and mileage as well as on-road performance, then for me, really, I don't think you can go overly far wrong. And let's face it, at the end of the day, all tyres are a compromise between the grip levels and terrain that you're riding on against the overall cost of that particular tyre. As well as your own expectations, riding styles and areas that you ride in as well. So as you can see from this uh, gentle little road that we're on at the moment, it's not an A road, it's a B road, but typically this is the type of road where you would find yourself with this kind of tyre. And I find that the bike grips perfectly well. The tyre, yeah, it's predictable. Obviously if it's wet, it's a very different story quite clearly, but you can feed the bike through the bends quite confidently, knowing that uh, you've got adequate traction there. In terms of outright noise, I don't think that's really a factor for me, to be fair. Uh, the bike is noisy enough, the windage, etc. all far outweighs any noise that the tyre generates. The only time you ever really hear it is if you are passing horses, for example, and uh, you hit the kill switch and you're just gently gliding past them. But as you can see from these gentle bends, yeah, the tyre's not too shoddy. And it certainly copes admirably well with what we're asking it to do. Okay, so we've established that the tyre is pretty good. It's half decent on road for what we want it to do, bearing in mind that it is a 50 50. So the next question begs then, what is it like off road? Because let's face it, if you're going to buy a Tenere, nine times out of ten, you're going to be looking for some form of off road capability. Now, again, subjective, it depends what type of terrain you're riding over, whether it's uh, sloppy mud, wet grass kind of terrain, rocks, boulders, or anything in between. For me, in the North Yorkshire Moors National Park where we are here, and also the Yorkshire Dales, there's a combination of mud and silt. It's a sedimentary rock that we have in the uh, North Yorkshire Moors. Uh, so that uh, is typically sandstone so you do get a lot of sandy silt uh, mixed in with the mud in the Yorkshire Dales it tends to be uh, more rubble and rock uh, but that said we do have both uh, waiting for us today so we're going to head down this trail and we'll take a look at what this tyre is like in various uh, types of terrain uh, so you guys can start to draw your own conclusions So 
one thing that we noticed with this tire straight away is it does have good grip levels good traction levels on the loose um, any deep sloppy mud yes it does start to uh, struggle a little bit it doesn't uh, clear itself quite as much as uh, a more aggressive 70 30 or uh, even something akin to uh, an 80 20 which is what i had on the bike before the metas e10 dakars it's a pretty similar story when you get into uh, the really loose boulder ridge it doesn't cope quite as well as something a little bit more aggressive but that said does it mean it doesn't cope no absolutely not for me it's quite an inspiring tire gives you lots of confidence here's a little bit of sloppy mud to boot and we can hear the tire spinning up there as we exit as well so a good mixture of terrain there from uh, loose compact kind of tracks through to uh, a little bit of mud and silt and a little bit of water to boot as well okay so we're on something a little bit more loose as you can see at the moment so how do we cope with the uh, loose surfaces rocks lumps and bumps oh of course and sheep well quite admirably to be fair and again it all harkens back to how you ride your bike yourself what sort of terrain you're under don't know whether you can hear that spinning up a little bit there but i do think to be fair size of that rock managed to miss that yeah i do think to be fair a lot of it is very much you know i think any tire would spin up on that to be honest because it's kind of bouncing and flicking but for me i think you know i'm very much uh, in that novice category when it comes to the off-road stuff so i'm after a tire that kind of delivers both on-road and off-road performance and i very much feel that the capra x does that for me so now we've got that little rocky bit out of the way this is where we stretch up into the tree line the forest uh, track arguably gets a lot looser a little bit more rutted and uh, considerably more uh, slippy in places so we'll get the camera down onto the tire again we'll have a look and see uh, how we get on and hopefully you should be able to see as well as here that spin up element that we get uh, with the capra x sometimes it can be quite a good uh, positive negative it can feel quite good just having the back of the bike a little bit light other times yeah when you want to dial in for that traction that's when you realize and certainly feel the tires capabilities being 50 50 at those points in time really you're probably looking for more of an 80 percent off-road rather than just 50 but nonetheless the world of tires is a compromise so let's get the camera moved and we'll get up this uh, little loose section and see how we get on so that's our camera all placed where we need it to be let's go see what happens So plenty of traction as well as plenty of wheel spin there as you can see dead rabbit but then very quickly we get into this loose element where the rain has pulled the uh, substrate down into these gullies and these grooves and i think this is really where you probably notice that the 50 50 element as opposed to uh, you know something a little bit more aggressive I can feel it and hear it spinning up but that said you know it does cope well enough and that is really where the compromise is I guess now if I was any good I would have been drifting around there but I'm not any good it's that novice element that novice category so yeah that was the loose stuff out of the way just little wet pockets now as we go through this very overgrown section just for the time being once we start to lose the summer months all of this bracken and ferns they will uh, in truth they will ease back and die back so there we are at the top of that little section so just between this tire review we're up on the tops now we're just going to work our way back down and do a little bit of a hill climb up some uh, rocky slabs so we can see how the tire performs there but would you look around us all of the heather is out in bloom now this bright purple that we can see all the way across the moor tops and it is such a crystal clear day today wow this is just incredible there are certain days you pop up onto uh, the top of the moors and it just quite literally takes your breath away 
we live in such a stunning area and to have this on your doorstep man alive we really are blessed we really really are blessed yes just had to share that with you guys that's one of those can't keep this to uh, yourself kind of moments so yes here we are coming uh, on road to an off-road section and uh, we should see hopefully if uh, the general idea of what we're about to attempt with the image capture works we should be able to see a little bit of footage from wheel cam and a little bit of footage from drone cam as well so I'm gonna get myself uh, through the first section of uh, gates up to the rocky ascent and that's where we'll pick the footage up okay so the general idea here is we should be able to see from we should be able to see from uh, peg cam there how the tyre gets on with a little bit of a steeper, rockier and looser climb. And that certainly is what uh, the climb up to Rudland Rig does give us. And you'll be able to see from both and all cams, it is quite a, a rocky and a loose surface. And this is where we pick up the sandstone steps now. And I think it's fair to say, you know, the tyre copes absolutely fantastically. Let's get our drone back. Okay then folks, so I hope you enjoyed that video. That was just my personal interpretation of how I find the Anlas Capra X. I do rate the tyre very much. The burning question of course would be when it comes to replacement in hopefully another two and a half to 3,000 miles time, would I replace it with another Capra X on the T7? Well, absolutely yes, 100% I would. I think personally for £105 fitted to the bike as a wheel off fitment, riding on this kind of terrain, it's, uh, I do typically ride on most of the time it's got to be said then it's an absolute no-brainer i do get quite literally as it says on the tin 50 50 so i'm the best of both worlds for this bike and my riding style i get the best in terms of off-road performance i also get the best in terms of longevity and on-road performance as well which does mean that i can use the t7 for some more longer distance or in things such as the north coast 500 for example that type of ride if i want to ride the bike down south then equally i can do that as well without too much of a compromise or that uh, illustrious death wobble that you tend to get anything uh, north of motorway speeds when you're running something a little bit closer to an 80% off-road 20% on so from me high up on the north yorkshire moors national park i'm going to bid you farewell guys thank you very much if you've stuck with me to the end thank you for your company as always if you haven't done so already please click the subscribe button that helps the channel in many ways and also give uh, the video a thumbs up and leave a comment i do reply to every single comment that i get both positive and negative so from me the t7 and the beautiful north yorkshire moors national park wherever you are in the world guys whatever you're doing keep it safe keep it shiny side up and we will catch you for the next one. Cheers folks. Bye now. Bye.